wheelchairs and was an apartment, right? So anyway, Mark's response was that uh, providing cannabis for medical reasons at no, no, no real profit and, and, and education for no profit essentially was not only a complete business failure, but, or would be a complete business failure, but that I would embarrass him and every other serious activist in the movement. And the best thing that I could do for the cannabis movement would be to quit what I was doing, go get a real job, and buy more stuff at Hemp BC. So, uh, yeah, needless to say, it took a while to actually get the store. Um, ironically, it was in part because of being arrested here at the university and then my cookie giveaway on International Medical Marijuana Day back in 2000 that brought more public attention to my work. I had a little bit of press early on. And then uh, when, we, when I got busted a couple times, just all this media and attention came my way. I had to hire people to, to run the buyer's club because I got so busy just signing up with people and you know, the, the media and, and planning and, and doing other stuff. Uh, and then uh, the police actually uh, told me to get a store when they arrested someone else in my building. It's kind of a, a long story, and, and man, I got a lot of them. But uh, anyway, the police told me that it was time for me to get a store. They couldn't get a warrant to arrest me. So I moved up the street and uh, opened up Ted's Books on Johnson Street. And uh, this is a, a very early picture um, of when I actually had a, a bookstore and a bookstore license. Um, we operated the, the Buyer's Club kind of can't see the distribution room, but the distribution room is just over here. And so I literally had this bookstore with people buying books and stuff. Well, anybody that was a member of the club would just kind of come in and I'd give them the nod and they'd go into the back room and buy their cannabis. It's really kind of hokey in a lot of different ways, but uh, it worked. And, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the only reason that the bubble burst was because uh, we've had an obvious strict policy about people not being able to resell their cannabis. You know, people that join our club, it's meant for them, they're redistributing it, their membership's taken away. So uh, one person whose membership I had taken away uh, actually brought the police back into our club trying to shut me down out of vengeance. And uh, it was a really awkward negotiation with the police officer who came in because it was understood through the police station that I was allowed to have this store somehow or that they told me to or whatever, this kind of silent agreement that wasn't in writing. So the police didn't really feel like they wanted to come in and lay charges, but they were sort of forced to because actually, yeah, when the cop came in the door, there's somebody breaking one of our rules. He was rolling a joint, so the cop saw some pot. And he's like, but he's like, oh yeah, there's pot everywhere. So he was sort of forced into starting an investigation in, in different ways. And, so uh, he decided we would just send the charges to the Crown Prosecutor. Uh, he would seize some materials, and uh, he actually helped me photocopy. I, I went to the police station where he even let me do the actual photocopying in the police station and make a second copy of our membership list so I could get back to the store and sell pot to everybody and not be interrupted, and he would still have a record of our membership list. It was, it was really quite surreal. And the beginning of a whole bunch of raids. We had one occur then. Two months after, um, I guess the last time I was arrested, uh, March 2002. That one, I guess they caught somebody downtown who was apparently reselling their pot. Um, the next one was uh, um, June 2002. Uh, one of our members assaulted somebody up the street, and uh, the guy that was assaulted was calling the police and just told them where she went. They came for her, came with a warrant for us the next day. Um, then I ran for mayor that year. You can actually see the Ted for mayor here just a little bit in, in a good copy of the picture. And this is up on our webpage. Um, my, this is my blurry head right here. And there's Queen Victoria coming to visit us at the club. Oh, not <laughs> Queen Elizabeth, sorry. <laughs> I'll be right. So, uh, <laughs> one of the things about the police raids, oh, yeah, our last one was February 2003. Um, We've beaten all the charges that were laid against us in court. Uh, the law class, I'll probably get into more of it, and the history is quite extensive. Um, one of the reasons that the, two of the raids, at least, were success, we were successful in beating was because as soon as the police raid our store, especially if I'm not in there, right, and the two raids that we used these kinds of arguments were the ones I wasn't there, it's like they're arresting people immediately 
people were on the phone calling the media, right? So you can see the TV camera here. Uh, Lisa Cardaskill from CBC Radio is just like a block away. She's usually there with the minutes. Um, the, the police don't like being interviewed, especially, you know, questions about why you're attacking this group of sick people under these circumstances, blah, blah, blah. So they've done a horrible job, uh, honestly, uh, and I don't, shouldn't dish the police, uh oh, I don't try to do that usually. Um, collecting information about the people they arrested. Um, but, <laughs> anyway, um, so we've been able to have the charges thrown out because they weren't able to prove the people they arrested actually had knowledge and control of the space. And uh, I won't embarrass them with the details about the information that were available, but certainly convictions could have been made, but we would have changed our argument. Most of the arguments we've used to beat the charges have been constitutional arguments, essentially based on you know precedent, and in some ways based you know, back to Morgenthaler, where you have a, a right as an individual, if you have medical necessity, to choose your uh, treatment, and uh, or refuse treatment, as the case is with you know, uh, blood transfusions and people that have religious beliefs against them. So it's the same constitutional argument that's been used. And so people with medical necessity have the right to choose to use cannabis. And we've been very successful in court uh, arguing that. But um, our raids and running for mayor and, and other stuff has brought, uh, at times, uh, a tremendous amount of media attention to the club, which has been, I guess, uh, both, both good and bad, but mostly good. Um, Again, uh, we've not only been successful in court, but we've opened up every single time, either right after the police raid, as in the first case, they were selling pot in the store before I even got back. I'm like, guys, wait till I get back before you start selling anything. I'm just going to go to the police station and get the membership list. Give me half an hour. They couldn't even wait half an hour. Um, so yeah, there's been times where we've been back up and running right after the police. Uh, usually it's been the next day, even before people have been uh, out of jail. Although, uh, I think the last time I got arrested, yeah, this is part of the story too. Uh, the last time I got arrested, uh, um, when I was released, uh, we went to have a rally down at City Hall, and, and Lars, uh, police officer, uh, reminded me that having Ted's books on the front actually incriminated me in any uh, potential illegal activity that occurred inside the space. And so, I kind of like to advise people if they're going to do something not just like this, but, but any kind of act of civil disobedience in a storefront, don't name it after yourself, because <laughs> it's hard to get out of being busted anymore without changing the name. So. Anyway, um, and even with the Buyers Club, we were at certain points thinking that we would just, if, if necessary for moving from our location, we were prepared to uh, come up with a completely new name, completely new signing procedure, and start up a completely new organization in a different space. Um, we had all sorts of different plans going on. It was, uh, not only were we close to jail, but close to bankruptcy. Uh, the, we were $10,000 in debt when the raids started to happen. It went about $1,000 a month. It, I was hovering around $80,000 debt for about two years there. It just kept growing more and more. No matter what I did, the expenses were greater than the revenues. When you, when you, you know, selling medical cannabis sounds like, oh, it's a pot of gold, right? You've got all these people that you can sell to and these growers are giving you great prices and blah, blah, blah. Well, I pay street value for the cannabis. If I want really good cannabis for our members, I'm going to pay top dollar. I can't nickel and dime people that are growing small amounts of really good cannabis. So I've got to pay them, you know, good, good money for them to be able to do it and do it well and, and keep up with the demands that we have. Um, on the other hand, you know, when you're selling it to them as well, you know, $10, if you see people coming in with $10 and you know that's all they have or $5 for the day, you know, it's really hard not to give them more than like 1.2, you know, it's supposed to be 1.1, but, you know, like, because every, you know, dollar kind of counts on both ends. And so once you start giving more than, uh, or even 1.2, your profit margins are really, you know, quite, quite narrow, but uh, nevertheless, uh, um, we've been able to overcome that debt of eighty thousand uh, dollars, partly because we got rid of all the thieves. Uh, it's hard to say if it's been fifty thousand dollars that's been stolen from me, or forty, or sixty, because you don't always add it up, especially when some people are stealing from the inside. I think we've gotten rid of them all, though, because in the last year we went from like eighty thousand dollars debt to it's somewhere between zero and five now. I don't exactly have an accounting system, so it's hard to add up.